to talk about our Monday special, Mid-Cap Mania. My co-anchor Nigel has run across to the plasma screen and he's going to talk about the stock on his radar, which is a company which manufactures agrochemicals and pharma intermediates. And the stock price has risen over 360% in the past one year. But are the credentials good enough? Nigel D'Souza will tell us more. Nigel. That's a big question, Sonia, really. And if you look at it, the last one year, it's been fantastic. It's high, we're close to around 350%. And there are a lot of stocks that are up 300, 400, 500%. But the reason that I picked this stock is really, in the last one month, we've been talking a lot of selling pressure. The Nifty is off the highs. The mid-cap index is under pressure. And this stock, in fact, has gained close to around 37%. So on the back of that, I picked this counter. Let's take a look at the shareholding pattern. If you look at it, the promoter holding has come down, but that's because of a preference issue that they did. So on the back of that, the, uh, the, uh, the promoter holding has come lower, but they've not sold. They've issued fresh shares. So because of the base expanding, that's why, in fact, it appears that the promoter holding has come down. Institutions, they have been buying into the company because their holding now is at around 4%. And SPI Equity Opportunities Fund, they seem to have be gradually biting into this uh, counter because they have picked up close to around 3.7% in the last couple of uh, quarters. Uh, the bad part, though, is that there is very, very high pledge. So you just take a look at it. The promoter's holding is at around 55%, but 34% of that is pledged. That's not good news. The financials as well, if I just take a look at it for the last one year, the revenue has jumped up by close to around 30%. Operating profit as well has jumped up. And margins have seen a big, big uh, jump. If you look at it, it's up above that 21% approximately. And the profitability is higher by 70%, but you need to take into account because there were a couple of one-offs. There was a mat credit of around 6 crores roughly, and there was an exceptional item hit of close to around uh, 17 crores. So stripped of that, the profitability would have looked even better. It's a 350 uh, crore uh, company, and 15 crores uh, approximately was the profit. So it's, it's fairly expensive currently, trading at more than 20 times if you look at it in that sense. The key growth uh, drivers really will be that they've entered a new division in the last uh, couple of years. That's a contract manufacturing operations. That sees a good growth. Analysts are expecting that to see a big uh, CAGR in the next uh, few years. And also operating margins with there are better than their existing business. So on the back of that, in fact, that's one of the key uh, drivers. The exports as well have moved higher. Currently, they have close to around 35% coming from exports, and a majority of those exports really are going uh, to the UK. So watch out uh, to, to Europe, nearly around 20%. And uh, also, if you look at it, they, they are emphasizing on a lot of yield, a lot of potential for productivity going ahead. So those are the various factors that are working in their favor. Then what's really the risk factors that are working out? We've been eyeing the monsoons. So the monsoons, if they don't come out, then they're not too good uh, news for them, because a weak monsoon will mean poor harvest, Poor har harvest will obviously hit these agrochemical uh, companies. Threat from uh, GM crops as well. Remember, GM crops, they, they will be fairly resilient to any kind of danger. So that as well is the second risk. Longer period for registration of a lot of products. That's uh, something that really uh, hits uh, companies like these. The working capital as well, the cycle is very huge. So on the back of that, in fact, those are a few risks. Nonetheless, the stock has been in focus. It's been moving higher. So watch it. Let's see whether, in fact, this year will be better if those one-offs are all out of there. Though valuation-wise, it's not looking very, very attractive. Already run up a goodish bit from around 30 rupees all the way to around 180 rupees. Back to you, sir. Oh, yes. 310% in the last 12 months. But is there any internal catch, uh, Nigel? Because, you know, externally you said that the vagaries of the monsoons right. and, uh, you know, working capital intensive industry. But internally, is there anything like high debt or something that the com that uh, investors should be worried about? No, sir. Actually, they have taken a big capital. Plan, but that's already come through and now in fact we'll see the benefits of that but uh it's nothing really unique in terms of what they are producing. I've been told that, in fact, many companies produce this. So it's not a niche market. It's not a first mover advantage or anything on, on that front. So maybe it's already done its uh, run and at, at around 180 rupees. Valuations may look expensive. It will be interesting to see what they do this year because last year was a fairly good year if you look at it on a year-on-year -year basis. And the previous couple of years wasn't great. So they saw co continuous decline. And last year, in fact, the revenue shot up, the margins improved, and the profitability as well jumped up. All right, Nigel, thanks for spotting that stock for us. Aztec Life Sciences, big gainer in the last 12 months.